Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Almighty Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. I am Ms. Fatima Muhammad Iqbal from Palestinian schools in Qatar. Today we are going to start unit number two. In unit number one, we discussed the learning styles and how can they help us get better. In unit number two, we are taking a step ahead and we are learning about the education. How and why is education important for our success? Here in period number one, we are going to study two success stories and what we can learn from them. Here in period number one, we have two pages, page 15 and page 14 and 15. Here we are going to discuss about two countries which are very successful in education. Let's begin. Period number one, two success stories and what we can learn from them. This is the most important question that there are so many success stories, but are they for us? And what can be the benefit that we can take from their success stories? How can those stories make us better? Let's start. Education ministers who are hoping to improve their school systems often look at Finland and Taiwan. Education ministers who are hoping to improve their school systems often look at Finland and Taiwan. The first is a small country in Northern Europe with a cold climate and a language hardly anyone else speaks. They are talking about Finland, which is a small country with a cold climate. The weather is usually cold and the language is Finnish and hardly anyone speaks. The second country is very small island that until fairly recently high levels of poverty and population. It's a poor country with high level of population. It means that population is there too much. Yet today, both of these countries come out at or near the top in international surveys of economic success. Year after year, they also score highly in educational results. Can this be an accident or is there a connection? So the writer is shocked that these two countries are successful. What is the reason? Are they successful because of their education? Because of their studies? Is there anything happening in their education process which make them successful? So the writer wants to know the answers. Two countries, Finland and Taiwan. Finland in Europe with the cold weather and a very unknown language. What about Taiwan? Taiwan is a small country, poor country in Asia. And both of them are doing excellent job in education as well as they are successful too. So what is the relationship between education and success? Here we have three highlighted words. Systems means ways, methods. Surveys are the studies. When we want to know something, we make surveys. We study that thing in detail. Connection is that how does it join something? Connection means joining.
Let's continue. Finnish education minister Tula Hatainen certainly believes there is there is a connection between education and the success of a country. In Finland, we believe we have to invest in education. In Finland, we believe we have to invest in education, she says. One reason she offers for Finland's success is that students don't begin real school until they are seven. And all students between seven and 16 get the same education. We don't divide at an early stage between students who do well and those that do not manage so well. It's an important point, see? She explains, studies show that it is dangerous to divide too early into different educational paths. I love this paragraph because it explains very important points. Finnish education minister Tula Hatayan, she believes that in Finland, we have to invest in education. What does invest mean? Invest mean to spend money. She believes in putting much money or more money in education. Why? Because it is important. And the students there, they do not start the school until they are seven. When they are seven, they join the school and all of the students get the same education. They have the same level of books. And they do not divide the students who do well and those they, that don't manage so well. It means that there is no division between clever student and slow learners. We learned these two terms in our unit number one that some students are excellent. They pick up quickly. So we label them clever. But others, those who need more time to learn or to master, we label them slow learner. In Finland, they do not divide the students. They all of them have the same education and they believe that if we divide the student too early, it is dangerous for them. See, important point, they do not start the school until they are seven. Everyone gets the same education and there is no division. There is no difference between the student who are clever and who are slow learners because they know that it is dangerous for students. Very important point. Like Finland, Taiwan has nine years of compulsory education, after which in both countries, students choose either an academic or vocational path. Very few choose to leave school in either country. One important difference, however, is in national tests, which are very important in Taiwan, but much less so in Finland. So here we are learning about Taiwan. Taiwan has nine years of compulsory. Compulsory means essential. They must do it. They have nine years of education. After that, the students choose either academic or vocational. Yani either they go for school for further studies or they go for some training colleges or institutes or universities. See here, they have this option, but very few choose to leave school. Very few goes to vocational path. They do not leave school. They stay and they continue their academic journey. Uh, there is a difference between Taiwan and Finland and the difference is that in Taiwan there are national tests which are very important. In Finland they are not that important. Now here 
the writer is asking a question in the end of the lesson. Can other countries learn from the Finnish and Taiwanese experience? These are surely some lessons that can be learned as long as we remember that just applying one country's system to another isn't a simple solution to all problems. Here, the writer is telling us clearly that we cannot apply Finnish and Taiwanese experience in every country. It will not be successful because maybe it is working over there, but it will not work in our country. Maybe we can take some of their strategies. We can take some of their ways, some of their methods, some of their, you know, systems, but we can't apply 100% of their system in our countries. So we need to be very, very careful in this regard. So here we have questions on page number 15. Pause the video here and then check how much have you learned from here. I will continue. We have to choose between true, false and doesn't say. Number one, the writer suggests that the economic success of Finland and Taiwan is rather surprising. He is surprised, shocked. Yes. The writer believes there is a connection between education and economic success. True. Tula Hatainen thinks clever students should have special lessons. Does she think about having divisions between clever students and slow learners? False. They don't divide. The education system in Finland and Taiwan have more differences than similarities doesn't say. The writer says that other countries should copy copy the education systems of Finland and Taiwan. Will it work? He does no. He doesn't say that they should copy the education system. No. He says that if we copy it, maybe it will not work. So copying is not a right strategy. Maybe we can choose. This one is the meaning of the highlighted words. I have already explained them to you. You can pause the video here and then continue. Something that joins two things together. Joining. Connection. Studies. When you do some study, it means you go for surveys. Like whenever you are doing your scientific research, you do surveys by making questionnaire or by doing some interviews. Spend money. I explained to you, invest in. Ways of organizing something is your systems. Systems are the ways of organizing things. An answer is solution solution the opposite is problem and making something fit a different situation applying to applying to making something fit a different situation put in different groups is divide divide so we have connection joining surveys studies invest mean to spend money, system, ways of organizing, solution is the answer, applying to, to make something fit, divide, put in different groups. Question number four, we have to match between 1 to 5 to A to E, very easy. Preschool, nursery, kindergarten is your learning before real school begins. Primary education, age 5 to 11. Secondary education is your, the next stage of education from age 12 to 8. Then we have further higher education is going to college or university. And compulsory education is your 
children, young people have to attend school by law. So it's a law to attend the school. This is the last question from this period on page number 15. So the words that we chose before are going to fit in here. In my country, children usually go to dash when they are four or five preschool. They then start their which education? Primary education at six. Both this and secondary education are dash for everyone, compulsory, very important. Most but not all students then move on to some kind of further or higher education like they go to college and university. Here we have preschool which goes for KG, pre-KG. Like we have nurseries, pre-KGs, Montessori also we call it. Then we have primary which is from after age five we start and then secondary then we have secondary education which is very compulsory compulsory made very important essential and after that we go for higher university degrees this was the end of our period number one hopefully you understood here we learned about two successful countries taiwan and finland where success rate is high as well as their educational improvement. So the writer surprised and asks if we can get something from them or no. Thank you very much. This is me saying goodbye and good luck.